Hey everyone, my name is Randy Lee and I'm an environmental engineer. And I can say I have confidence now because just recently I passed my PE exam for civil engineering. However, since I live in California and I'm taking the civil engineering route, I still have to take a state specific seismic and survey exam at a later date after I submit my application and hear from the board. But in the meantime, while I wait to hear back from their responses, I want to give some tips on how to pass this exam. But first, let me give you some context in the background that way you can gauge where you stand in comparison to me and how much of a struggle you might be dealing with for this exam. So back in 2016, I graduated with a bachelor's in chemistry. Right off the bat, you can tell that I don't have any engineering experience just from that. But miraculously, I graduated with a master's in environmental engineering in 2017. You could say that from my master's experience that I did have some weight of my knowledge in engineering. And I would slightly agree to that, but it depends on your university and individual. My master's program, for example, was actually much easier than my bachelor's program because most of my professors, they didn't really care. Everyone in my class passed their class because it was easy to put in little to no effort from the students. The professors themselves didn't really care. So that means I graduated without much difficulty, but without much knowledge in the concept of engineering. I know I got lucky during school, but that could be a double-edged sword when you're actually trying to apply for work in this field, like without actually knowing what you're doing. Fast forward to my work experience. My first job was working in a biochemical research facility working on cancer cells. So as you can imagine, this has nothing to do with engineering. I only got this job because of my chemistry background. And after this project was complete, I got laid off and that's when I had to look for another job. That was the point where I was considering, should I stick with chemistry or like a science background or switch completely to engineering? I shifted completely to engineering because I knew it would pay more and really that was when I opted to take my fundamentals exam so I could one day become a fully fledged licensed professional engineer. And that itself is a whole separate journey in another video and I'll link that somewhere else if you wanna watch that later. So I went ahead and scheduled to take my FE exam. I passed the first try and I started applying to engineering jobs. I got my first environmental engineering job and I worked there for about three years working for the Air Force. I later found this current job that I'm working at, working at the state water boards, and I've acquired about two years of work experience from them. So in total, I have about five years of work experience from different categories as it relates to like environmental engineering. So in summary, the last time I went to school was about seven years ago and I have about five years worth of work experience. I do not have any kids, I'm not financially stressed, and I do not have to have like any large family responsibilities besides taking care of myself and my significant other. So I know a lot of people are not in the same boat as me. They could have different responsibilities, maybe disabilities, priorities, and so on that can affect how much time they can have to study for this exam. That being said, now that you know my story, Gauge where you lie in the situation because you might be spending more time handling like other matters in your own life than actually studying. All right, now for the important part of this video, how do I pass this exam? You might not even like the answer, but this is like the most straightforward answer that I can give you. In order for you to pass this P exam, you need to enroll in a prep course. I cannot stress this enough that you will have a very difficult time staying self-motivated and disciplined if you do not enroll in a prep course. That means you will have to pay the out-of-pocket expense of probably like $1,000 for this prep course. Hopefully your company reimburses you for it, but if not, you might just be better off like biting the bullet and paying for it yourself because in the end, once you finish this test and get the license, it should pay you exponentially in the future. All right, now that you know like the blunt, straightforward answer, here are a few reasons why I say that you should enroll for a prep course. The first one is that you spend money. Usually when someone spends money, they want to get the best bang for their buck. So they're willing to squeeze everything they can out of this course for the sole reason that they spend money. Spending money could hurt people in a way. It, that mental pain where you don't really wanna see all your money go to waste. People will do everything they can to optimize and justify that kind of pain. But trust me, when you get the reward of passing the exam, you'll say that the money was well spent. Two, you're now forced to study and stay disciplined. So piggybacking off of the first point, it's because you spent money that you find yourself self-motivated to get everything you can from this purchase. You're forced to stay on task, to attend lectures, to do the homework, and you know stay disciplined because it's like going to school and college all over again. Three is that someone is actually teaching you. I've talked with some other colleagues who tried to take this exam without a prep course. So they went out and bought practice booklets, you know, on for cheap, totaling maybe like $100 or $200. And then they gave themselves like a couple of months to study. Some were serious, some were not so serious. And you can imagine that the ones who were not serious did not pass. It is because they don't feel that sort of pressure or sense of purpose. And they were like iffy and, you know, somewhat lackluster in their studies. They also didn't have someone to teach them or like oversee them if they had any questions. You can't really figure out all those practice booklet concepts by yourselves. And if you had a question, like, who can you really go to? Who can you ask? The books, they were just for practice problems that gave you an answer 
after following a series of equations, but you don't really have any idea how to interpret the question or even decide you know, how that equation was derived or like why they used that equation instead of another equation. So very few people that I know have passed the PE exam the first time using this method. Probably maybe like one in a hundred will pass the exam through this route unless you're like a prodigy or you just know everything about engineering. But if you consider yourself average like me, then it's probably best to avoid that type of gamble. It's because you're paying like $400 each time you pay to schedule an exam. Meaning if you fail like just twice, you've already paid $800. So that's $800 down the drain. And you probably could have just spent that same amount of money to pay for a prep course. All right, so now here's what I did to pass the exam. Step by step, every individual will be different with varying degrees of responsibilities and learning methods. But again, I consider myself pretty average with like really no extraordinary engineering experience. First thing is that you have to enroll for a prep course for your field of interest. I enrolled and I'm not sponsored by them in any way or affiliated with them, but I chose EET. I chose them over School of PE because I've heard some mixed reviews with School of PE. EET gives you a binder, just you know, check out their website. All the info is over there. I won't really go into details because I'm not sponsored by them. I don't want to sound like a salesperson. I just merely enrolled with them and I found the services successful with proven results. So I enrolled this year, January 2024, like basically the beginning, January 1st. I took the PE exam on June 3, 2024. So that was about six months worth of studying. I believe that six months is the optimum amount you need. You can go even faster. I've seen some people pass with like four months of studying if you want, but anything lingering past nine months is probably too long. Mentally, you will never feel ready, but once you fix that exam and you choose a date, you know, it's do or die. Don't be so anxious that you prolong to take the test forever. You just need to take it. And if you fail the first time, at least you come out with the experience. You'll know how the exam is structured and everything. Next, I set aside two to three hours every day, weekdays and weekends to study. By study, I mean either watching lectures, doing practice problems, or reviewing the booklet. If the lecture is say one and a half hours, that counts as studying. So I watched every lecture video from the prep course. Uh, some people found it useful while others said it was just too long and pointless to each their own, but I needed to understand the concept because I had no background and some of you may want a refresher on some of these things. It took about four months to finish watching all the lecture videos, take into consideration how you divide each subject and how long it might take to finish watching all these lecture videos. For me personally, it took four months, which I think is pretty slow. I personally need time to absorb things, which is why I prefer to take it slow and steady. After finishing the lecture videos, I went back and did the important starred questions of each section in a practice booklet. There are about, say, 30 questions in each section and only eight starred, very important questions in each section. Do just those questions to save yourself time if you're in a rush. I did one section a day, so if there are about like 10 chapters or 10 sections, that took about 10 days just to attempt to understand these types of starred questions. I briefly skimmed the concepts of each section before doing these questions just to like refresh my mind on the main concepts and formulas being used. After doing the starred questions, then I would start over again from the very beginning and now go through all the questions in each section. So I repeated the starred questions on this attempt again, as well as finishing the rest of the, the questions in each section. This approach will take longer than expected, so I gave myself one to two days for each section. That means it could take about, again, if there's 10 chapters or 10 sections, that could take about 20 days to do this whole process. So at this point, you would have spent at least five months from the beginning of enrolling to where you are right now. At this point, you should also be pretty well prepared. If you were to take your test like the next day, you should pretty much know what you're doing. So with the time left over, you can decide whether or not you're ready to take the test. The EET prep course had about three full practice problems that each lasted in about like eight hours. I did not do all three because I didn't want to exhaust myself or like feel burnt out. I do recommend that you do at least one of them so you could build your endurance and like your brain stamina because the real test is designed to test your mental strength. I'd say the concepts and formulas are pretty consistent and like relatively straightforward, but just imagine using your brain when you're like mentally burned out. That's where the test separates the ones who will pass versus the ones who will fail. Overall, I scored about 50% consistently during the practice quizzes in the prep course, which is actually pretty low or like maybe standard. And I scored a 70% on my one attempt at that full practice exam. Again, I am not a prodigy or like very smart in engineering, 
I'm just like the most average guy you know. So what I lacked for engineering knowledge, I had to make up for by staying disciplined and actually focusing on the task. And from what I've heard, you only need to score about like a 70% to actually pass this PE exam. So, you know, maybe I barely passed based on my score, but overall, a pass is a pass. And lastly, here are some tips on the actual day of the exam. The first tip is get a good night's rest the day before the exam. I would actually recommend that you don't study at all the day before. Don't eat anything too heavy or, you know, destructive on your digestive system. And even on the day of your exam, don't eat anything that will like upset your stomach because, you know, you might get test anxiety and you might end up using the bathroom during the exam, which will actually cut into your time. You don't want to be wasting your time like that if you can prevent it. Now that you're actually in the exam, some people recommend taking this three pass system method. This means that you just quickly skim the problem and see if you can solve it within like the first five minutes. If you can't solve it, you just flag it and move on to the next question. For questions you have no idea on where to even start, I would flag immediately and just take a guess. Since most are multiple choice with four possible solutions, that means you have a 25% chance of getting it right no matter what answer you choose. Since questions are equal weight, it's just probably best to like, just guess a, an answer with like a 25% chance of getting it right. And using that save time to answer a question that you know you will get a 100% correct. Basically, answer all questions and never leave anything blank. You do not lose points for getting any question wrong. Lastly, tip number four, and I'm not sure if it's entirely true, but typically an answer choice with all of the above is usually the right answer. If they say extreme words such as never or always, those are typically the incorrect answer. Also, answer choices like B or C, statistically more likely to be the correct answer choice than answer choice A or D. So if you're gonna take a guess, eliminate what you can and consistently choose one letter choice throughout the entire guessing spree. Don't just choose A, B, C randomly. Just choose like B, 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 or C, 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 C. All right, so I mean, I know that was a lot of information, but I think that's like the best advice I can give for anyone taking this professional engineering civil water resource route. These tips take into consideration the new test format that applied like April 2024. So anyone watching this right now should be covered for at least that part. I hope this video helps and I hope that you're all able to pass for the first time. This is a brutal test, but I know you can do it. That's all for this video. Goodbye.